important to you to get up close and personal with the fans? I mean, you don't always get a chance to do it to the extent you do today. Um. It's always special. It's so uplifting, and, and our players enjoy it. You know, getting here and, you know, Brady brought me kind of to reality about a guy getting his offseason disrupted because they've got, you know, they're on a plan, they're on a, a five-day schedule, and then the two days where they actually have some time to do something with their families and disrupting it. But once our players get here, they love it. They really do. Seeing each other and, you know, the, I miss them. I don't know if they miss me, but they, they, they're – it's one thing to have forced friendships. It's another one to have uh, something that you really would have whether you played the game or not. And, you know, they're a, they're a close group. And, you know, bring, being able to bring somebody back like Mark, who who fits us so well, w w was big for us. Yeah, but, you know, a lot of the faces that you're seeing are the same ones you saw at the end of last season. And that seems to be a good thing. Well, there's some continuity there that, you know, it's, you know, I was talking that we were putting together our film for spring training, some things that we want to emphasize this year. But one of the things I want to show them is, you know, the comments that Adam Jones makes after signing a multi-year contract, or Chris Davis signs after signing a multi-year contract, or, um, or Mark Trombo signs, you know, talks about after he signs, uh, uh, Darren O'Day after he signs the multi-year extension. And they're very much the same theme that, you know, there's ways to stay here. You can make this happen, and we would like for you to. But, you know, if you look at the type of people that we've committed to like that, they're people that, uh, you know, share a real similar um, uh, tool set, so to speak, that they bring not only on the field but off of it. You talked a little bit out there with the fans about how you saw the corner outfield spot shaking out. Are you comfortable? I did. A little bit. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a little foggy. Yet. What did I? Say? I mean, you know, I'm sure you remind me of what I said. But are you comfortable with the pieces that are there, or do you think there needs to be one more? Like Dan said, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Or? I'm fine going now. But you know, what is a speedy? What did Dan say? With someone with speed and defense. We have some people with speed and defense, but you know, I'm looking for more then. I mean, I think a lot of people miss how much joy and uh, Darren we missed with him not with us last year and. You know, Joey was basically leading off about as well as anybody in the American League for the period of time he was here, and you know that went away. So we had to kind of piecemeal that around. We'll see where that all fits. We really didn't have Kim at the start of the season for a month before he kind of got into the flow of what was going on, and we knew that was going to probably happen. So uh, you know, he's he's not going to play for WBC. He's been down in uh, Sarasota now for the last week working. I can, I think. I think uh, him knowing what's coming in the preparation, it's like their, their spring's almost three months long. That was a whole different gig for him last spring, so he knows what's coming. Um, what was your original question about the outfield? You know, Seth, we have to familiarize ourselves there. You know, I know that uh, uh, I'd like to use Mark to give uh, Chris some more days DHing than we did last year and have him play some first base. And, uh, you know, he and Seth, you know, Seth can play. Actually, Seth's played about as much left field as he has right field, maybe more. So there's some options there. And we got some young kids that I really want to take a look at, especially these two Rule 5 guys. We got plenty of games and plenty of time down there in this spring. My gosh. A lot of these guys, I may not play them until the first week in March in a game because the spring's so long this year with the WBC. When, when the season ends like it did last year, not that nobody, anybody's not motivated, but when it ends as toughly as it did last year, does that motivate a team even more? I don't know if the toughness of it's always someone, there's never a pleasant ending if you're not the last team standing. Um, I think everybody's just ready to, you know, that they played so well for a majority of our games. I remember it, it's a lesson to me about the spring. You know, we, we were like 0-8 or 0-9 or something, 10, and nobody even remembers that, so it, it, it's... It's about, but some of those evaluations we made through that O oh, and whatever in the spring last year helped us. So I know for me personally, I'm really looking forward to this spring because, uh, you know, I think our guys uh, uh, are ready to get on with it. You now that they know what's ahead of them, they know the grind, how long and how many things have to be committed to to, to get it right. This is real hard to do. But I know I keep telling the fans today and, I, and uh, our players know that, that you know, just being competitive and being in the playoffs isn't good enough for us anymore. You know, our guys, 
talk about how tough our division is and all the things that the other clubs have done. Our guys have heard that every year. And, uh, and hopefully we'll be be there. But how much encouragement can you take from the second half that Bundy and Gosman had, not only for this year, but maybe for the rest of the years? Well, you know, a lot, of that, yeah, a lot of that second half was because we, we turned them loose. You know, but, you know, the timing, you know, being able to develop those guys, it's going to be nice this year not to have those, those um, you know, those restrictions on them. And still going to have some, like we would with any pitcher, to keep them healthy. They're a precious commodity. But, you know, Dylan and, and uh, Kevin are, are uh, let's be frank with it, you know, one of the reasons why they're good young pitchers with bright futures that aren't, you know, putting our payroll in a lot of distress at this point. But it will at some point. And, you know, having to pay salaries for starting pitchers and commitments has been proven in our game to be a, a dead end. You know, by the time they get to the point where they can warrant that type of commitment, the wear and tear is such. I'd be fine in committing to one of our young guys because I know the wear and tear isn't there. So yeah. that's why it's so great about developing your own because you can monitor the wear and tear on these guys. And you really did bring each of them along very slowly. In a different you know, pace, but, you yeah. know, Dylan was the idea that after the break that we could loosen up on him. And, and uh, Kevin, you know, trying to take the, the short end early so we didn't have to do that to their teammates, the team, and, and, and really the fans and shut them down later on in the season trying to get ahead of it. This year we go into it without any real restrictions. You know, we got a couple little medical issues that we're keeping an eye on going in, you know, coming out of mini camp that, we know there's going to be something every spring, but I think, like Dan said, the depth of our pitching um, is something we're constant, constantly trying to improve on because you can never have enough. And actually, you know, trading Giovanni does take a little bit of that depth away. Well, if you described uh, talking to the fans here, the, the standards now, it's not just making it to the playoffs. Is there, with the success that you've, been a part of. Is there a responsibility that you feel? How would you describe that to keeping this thing going as, as in an ultra competitive Yeah, you, you don't want it to become a albatross, like, oh gosh, they expect me to do this, us to do this again? Gosh, can we have a year off? No, you can't. And we don't want it that way. I mean, why why do this and commit so much of your time and effort and your passion? And I mean, it's a labor of love. I mean, I, I look every morning I get up, I look forward to trying to figure out some way to improve anything, whether it's a phone call or whether it's putting down another batting order, another what if, if we could get this, how would that fit, you know, in the seventh inning, the ninth inning, how would that fit against a left-handed starter? You know, you're always, just like the fans are doing at home and doing, you know, on a notepad at their office when they're really not supposed to be doing it, and to act like they're working. I know I did it in class, but, uh, no, I, 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 I like that, that, uh, that barometer. I like that needle being raised and, you know, I think it's, it's they're still appreciative for everything that's going on in the past, but, you know, it's kind of reality of our world is what have you done for me lately? And I think because of the things that they've created and how well they've played, they've created those expectations and they should be proud of that and they should embrace it and not think it's something hanging around their neck and they won't, but it's a fine line when you're managing and coaching and making sure they don't feel like you know, you know the, the the sky is falling if something doesn't work out perfectly that day. What was the toughest question you got from the kids today? <laughs> um, you know, it was something about uh, the. Uh, trying to think, there was one that that stumped me about uh, what I like to eat or where I'd like to eat out, and I don't ever eat out, so I couldn't come up with anything. So I had to ask her where uh, she liked drive-through fast food. Nothing I wasn't. Those are really good. They're very sincere questions, too. And they're innocent. There's not any meanness to them. And, you know, it was fun. I think the wild card might have been a setup. The one kid, the one kid, the one kid did ask you who you like managing better, the Orioles or the Yankees. And that was pretty easy. <laughs> and I, that one, I, I'm going up. Is this a trick question? <laughs> I don't know. I've got the Rangers or the Diamondbacks in there. That all finished on Baltimore. Dave was talking about. Uh, Gosman and Bundy, and you won't, obviously won't have those restrictions that you had last year, but can you speak to the consistency that Chris Tillman has brought to this team over the last four or five years? Well, that's, you know, it's, uh, Chris has been a rock. You know, he's through thick and thin, and 
you know, he, uh, you know, for a good portion of our season last year, he was being talked about as a Cy Young candidate. And, you know, physically, he got away from him a little bit, and then uh, he got back on track at the end. But, uh, you know, someone says, oh, this is a contract year for Chris. Every year he is. I mean, Chris will be the first to tell you, say, hey, I'm making enough money this year. If I got to, <coughs> he's doing it for a different reason. And he, obviously, he'd like to spend the rest of his career here in Baltimore. But, you know, this is about being there for his teammates. It really is. He wants to be a guy that you can count on every fifth day. And, and it's sincere. He, uh, I love having a conversation with this Chris. With Chris Chris got a lot of common sense. A lot smarter than people may give him credit for. He, uh, he, he understands BS from you know, reality. And uh, I enjoy bouncing things off of him as I've got to know him because he always has a real down-to-earth response. Buck, after 109 innings for Bundy, if he's in your opening day rotation, does he have enough innings beginning to end? Yes. No concerns? None. I know this, I mean, everybody's going to put these exact acute numbers on everything. At this one, he's going to feel this, and at this, he's going to feel that. And there's no studies, no scientific stuff, nothing to back any of that stuff up. It's just a bunch of people trying to, you know, create some niche that exactly this many innings and exactly this many increments, do you have to do exactly this. It's a crock. And anybody that gives that any uh, credence doesn't know what they're talking about. So he's fine to go, and if there's a problem along the way, we'll back up and and leave it alone. But uh, people in the arena chuckle at people that try to say this is what you got to do when a guy reaches X amount of innings. It's a human body. It's not a machine.